All right. Good evening, youth. How are you doing? Doing fine and well by the grace of God, right? Amen. This week, we are entering into a fresh new month. This is the first Saturday of the month. So we are entering into a new focus. What is this month focus? Let's type it in the comment section so that, yep. I guess some of you would have guessed it correctly. This month focus is motivation. Yes, what is motivation? When the word motivation comes to you, what comes into your mind? Sometimes we use this word motivation, right? Oh yeah, I don't have motivation to study. I don't have motivation to do anything. I don't have motivation to uh, clean the house. So what is motivation actually? Motivation, if you search the meaning in Google, it means a reason or reasons for acting or behaving in a particular way. So this week, I have entitled my message as Clarifying Your Purpose. Clarifying Your Purpose. Why do I entitle today's message as that? How does that relate to motivation? Because motivation is found when purpose is discovered. When you have purpose, you are motivated. When you have purpose, when you know what you want, when you know what you want to achieve, you will be motivated. Amen? When you have a purpose in life, you will have a direction. Direction. So, how can we know direction? For example, if let's say you are driving and you don't know the direction, what do you use? The GPS, right? They have Google Map and Waze. They call it the GPS. So today, our acronym will be GPS. Okay, how many of you know what does GPS stands for? I believe some of you know what is GPS. GPS stands for Global Positioning System. But today, we're going to see how GPS means God's Positioning System. What is the GPS? The GPS is the Word of God. When we have the Word of God, we will know the direction that we should go. We will know where leads to life, where leads to darkness. Amen? So, let's go to the first letter of GPS. G. What does G stand for? G stands for goal. Goal. When we talk about goal, one of the spot comes into my mind, which is football. Football. How can a football player win the football match? First, they have to focus on the goal. Of course, there is a lot of strategy. They have to do teamwork. There is a lot of planning. But they have to have goal. They have to know where they have to shoot, where they have to kick in order to get the goal, correct? So, as an elect, born again of the gospel of water, blood and spirit, we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We too have to have a goal in life. If we don't have a goal, then it doesn't matter where we are going. This quote by Lewis Carroll, he said, If you don't know where you are going, any road will get you there. So imagine a football player don't know where is the goal. So even if the football player kick to the left, kick to the right, kick to the front, kick to the back, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because anywhere is okay because there's no goal, correct? So it's very important for us to have a goal in life. 
Without goal, we will have no direction. Without goal, we will not know where am I heading. Without goal, I will not know whether I'm progressing or not. Right? So, now it brings us to a question. What is my goal? What do you think is your goal, church? Young people, what is your goal? Some of you, your goal may be, I want to get straight A's. I want to score good in my result. I want to get scholarship. I want to go to the best university in town. Some of you may have that ambition. That could be your goal. Some of you may think that, okay, after I study well, I want to make a lot of money. For some of you, you may think, after I study well, after I get the scholarship, I want to earn money. I want to work in the best company in town. I want to earn a lot of money. Why do you want to earn a lot of money? Maybe you want to have a good partners in life. You want to have children. You want to buy a big car. You want to live in a big house. Am I saying all these are wrong? No, they are not wrong. But all these things are the goal that is on earth. All these things, when you leave this world, it will be gone. Empty you come, empty you will go. After all the good grades that you have, after all the money that you make, after getting married, after having children, after buying the best car, the best house, when we die, what do we bring? Nothing. Because the things on earth are perishable, but the things in heaven is not perishable. That's why Paul said in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 2, Since then, you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Why does Paul say this? Because he know that the things on earth is perishable. That's why even Jesus said in Mark chapter 8, verse 36, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? So, our ultimate goal in this life is to serve Him, is to invest in the unshaken kingdom, in the place where no thief will go in, where moth will not be there. We invest our time, our talent, our money in the unshaken kingdom. Amen? That is our ultimate goal in life, church. All the things that we achieve in this life will one day be gone. But the thing that we achieve in this gospel will be eternal, eternal in nature. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 21, Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Amen? Yes, church, as an elect, born again of the gospel of water, blood and spirit, we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We invest our substance, we invest our time, our talent in the kingdom of God, where there is no rust, there is no moth, even the thief cannot steal. If we put our money at home, sometimes thief come in and steal it. Sometimes our valuable things got stolen. That is earthly things. 
earthly things will be perishable one day. But the thing that we do for the kingdom of God will never be perishable because it's eternal in nature. Paul knows. Paul knows his goal in life. He knows his purpose in life. He knows that he is here on earth to serve the Almighty God. He knows that he is called to preach the gospel to the Gentile. He knows his calling. He knows his goal. That's why in Philippians chapter 3, verse 8, he can say this. Yes, furthermore, I count everything as loss compared to the possession of the priceless privilege, the overwhelming preciousness, the surpassing worth and supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord and of progressively becoming more deeply and intimately acquainted with Him, of perceiving and recognizing and understanding Him more fully and clearly. For His sake, I have lost everything and considered it all to be mere rubbish, refuse, drags, in order that I may win, gain Christ, the Anointed One. So, through this verse, I took Amplified Version because it expounds very nicely why Paul is able to consider all things as rubbish. Because he knew about the possession of the priceless privilege. He knows what is awaiting him in heaven. He knows his purpose in life. Do we know our purpose in life? Today in church, we are safe to serve. There are a lot of people are still dying, not knowing this gospel. That's why we who believe in the gospel of God's righteousness, we believe that Jesus took all our lifetime of sin at River Jordan when John the Baptist laid his hand, how Jesus died on the cross and resurrect because we believe in the three witnesses. Today, we can have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said in John 3, 5, For unless a man is born of the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So, it's very important, church, that we are born again, and now that we are born again by believing in the gospel of God's righteousness, we are safe to serve. That is our goal in life. Just like how people risk their life, we don't know who risk their life to actually preserve this gospel. Today, we need to do the same. For the sake of the future generation, we need to hold on to this gospel or else the gospel will be distorted again. So stay true to the gospel. Know your goal. Serve him faithfully. A lot of people are drowning, church, drowning in sin. They are waiting for an answer. Today, because we are born again, we are able to share the gospel to them and preach the gospel to them so that they too will be able to be born again. Amen? Each and every one of us who are born again of the gospel of water, blood and spirit, the gospel of God's righteousness, each of us has been given talent. Just like the parable of the talent that Jesus told in the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 25 verse 14, to 30, there are three people that the master, the man, give talent to. One of them give one. The second one give two. The third one give five. What happened? What do they do with those talents? Let us read in Matthew chapter 25, verse 20 to 28. So, he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have 
gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you have delivered to me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. Wow! Church, this story of three people that are having different number of talents. One of them decided not to multiply the talent, but the rest of the two decided to multiply. Today, as born-again child of God, God has given us talent. It's very important that will multiply the talent for His glory. If we don't, the Bible says, even what you have will be taken away from you. So, church, on that day when we meet the Lord face to face, what will the Lord say to you? Will the Lord say to you, well done, good and faithful servant? Or, the Lord will say, you, wicked and lazy servant. Which one we want? Our ultimate goal in life is, God, I want to go back heaven and I want to hear you telling me, well done, good and faithful servant. Not the other one. Not waiting for God to say, you, wicked and lazy servant. We want to be crowned with the crown of life, with the crown of rejoicing, with the crown of righteousness. This is our ultimate goal as a believer. We want to go back to heaven and be crowned by our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? There are many types of crowns in heaven awaiting for us, faithful servant of God. There is crown of righteousness, crown of life, crown of glory, incorruptible crown, crown of rejoicing. So, church, I think this is even more valuable than anything that you can ask for in this life because this crown is not perishable and this crown is given to you by our Lord Jesus Christ. So, we should aim, we should set our goal to always seek to serve His righteousness and His church so that the gospel will be proclaimed, so that His name will be lifted high on earth. Amen? So, after knowing our goal, after knowing our goal, church, we will know our P. What does P stand for? GPS, right? What does P stand for? P stand for priority. When we know our goal, we will be able to set our priority right because we know where we are heading. We know our direction. Just like the football player that I mentioned just now. If 
the football player know where is the goal, they will know how to set their priority. But if let's say the football player is playing in a field that doesn't have a goal post, the football player will just kick anywhere and everywhere that he wants, correct? But because he have the goal, he's able to set his priority. Anything that bring me closer to my goal, I will do that. Anything that bring me away from my goal, I should not do that. Because it will be such a waste if let's say you're already walking towards the goal, suddenly you shift. You shift to somewhere else, then it will take you longer to reach where God intended you to be. So, it's better to set our goal right when we know our goal. Father, my goal is to serve you. I want to serve you faithfully. I want to serve the church faithfully. When we know that is our goal, then our priority will be right. Then we will know how to give our submission to the church of God. We will know that anything that comes against me and God is not something that is good to me because it brings me away from my goal. And you will be able to set your priority. So, how do I know what is my priority? That's why the Word of God is very, very important. Knowing God is the highest priority in life. Knowing God, uh, knowing God and knowing about God is two different things. It's just like I say, I know Amara and I know about Amara is two different things. I know Joshua and I know about Joshua is two different things. So, Knowing God, knowing who He is, is very, very important. When we know God, when we know what is the thing that He likes, what is the thing that He don't like, we know all those things, we will know what is our priority. But in the flesh, we will never be able to know because the Bible says that only the Spirit of God knows God. Let us read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 to 12. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, it says this, For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Yes, church, today, because we are united with Jesus through his baptism, we die. We, everything that we are, our sin nature and who we were, our flesh died with him. And when he rose from the dead, we too rose again with him. And that's why we have the spirit of Christ living inside of you. The Bible says, just now we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11, it says, even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. So, today we have the Spirit of God living inside of us. We will be able to know the heartbeat of God. We will be able to know what pleases Him and what does not please Him. We will know what is light, what is darkness. We will know what I'm supposed to do? How do I set my priority right, God? In the flesh, you can never set your priority right because you are still attached with the things of this world. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life will always be with us. It's only 
when we die to our flesh, when we walk in the Spirit, we are able to set our priority right. Amen? So church, do not be like a Pharisee. You know what the Pharisee do? They just praise God with their mouth, with their tongue. But their heart is far away from Him. Let us read in Matthew chapter 15, verse 8 to 14. This is what Jesus said. These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips. But their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandment of men. When he had called the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear and understand. Not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defile a man. Then his disciple came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisee were offended when they hear this saying? But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into the ditch. Church, what do you see from this story? These people draw near to him with their mouth. With their lips, they honor him. But their hearts is far, far away from God. Sometimes we can be like that. We think we are setting our priority right. We think that Okay, I'm serving God. I'm playing the guitar. I'm playing the drum. I'm playing the bass or whatever I'm singing. Then you think that you're setting your priority right. It's not about what you do or don't do. It's the matter of heart. If let's say you do all that you want to do to serve the church of God, but your heart is not there, it's not acceptable to God. God sees the heart, not the action. The action is the result of the heart. But even the Pharisee, outwardly, they can do something. Outwardly, they can praise, they can honor God with their mouth, with their lips. But their heart is far away. Jesus knows what is our priority inside our heart. Sometimes we think that, okay, I'm serving God, what? I'm very faithful, I always come to church. I always attend the Zoom meeting. I always do this, do that. I'm faithful. It's not the matter of what you do. It's the matter of your heart. Is your heart right with God? That is how we set our priority. We check our heart always. Is there anything else that is hindering me from knowing God, from achieving my goal? That is putting God first. It starts with our heart first. Before it becomes an action, it starts with our heart first. So we have to always check our heart. Is my heart setting God as the priority or not? Amen? So church, with that, it leads us to the last point, S. S stands for satisfaction. Satisfaction. Where do our satisfaction come from? That determines whether our purpose is right. Pastor always tells us this, God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in Him. So church, it's very important for us to be satisfied in Him so that He will be glorified. Nothing in this world can satisfy the heart of man. There is one quote, very famous quote, it says this, The only one who can satisfy the human heart is the one who made it. Exactly. This is the point. And this is not just a quote, you know. I believe Whoever that wrote this code took it from the Bible itself because nothing new under the sun. Amen? 
So it brings us to our abide world verse, which is taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11. Let's read it together. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He also has planted eternity in man's heart and mind, a divinely implanted sense of a purpose working through the ages which nothing under the sun but God alone can satisfy. Yet, so that man cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. Church, I want us to read the green colour again and the red colour. He also has planted eternity in man's heart and mind. That nothing under the sun but God alone can satisfy. Wow, church. God purposely planted eternity in the heart of man so that man will seek him. So that they know Nothing in this world can satisfy them and they want to find the truth. This verse is saying that he planted eternity in man's heart and mind. Which means there is eternity inside of us. Eternity either together with him or apart from him. There is no middle ground. There is no grey zone. It's either you die in Christ or you die apart from Christ. So this eternity has been planted in the heart of man already. That's why men are so afraid to die. Men don't want to die because there is eternity in them. But then what choice they make in life matters. Today, we who are born again, we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that He planted eternity in man's heart that nothing under the sun but God alone can satisfy. Today, we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We are satisfied. We are satisfied, church, because what else do we seek for? This is the best gift in life. That's why the song, In You, I Am Satisfied. This is a very, very powerful song. When we wake up, we can rest upon His grace, knowing that He will walk us through every moment of our life. That gives us satisfaction, church. Knowing that we will never be alone in our life anymore. That give us satisfaction, church. If that itself doesn't give us satisfaction, then we have to check our goal. Then, after we check our goal, we have to see our priority. It's only when we set our goal right, we will be able to prioritize the right thing. Then we will be able to be satisfied by Him. If we don't set our goal right, we think of only achieving earthly things. I want to make a lot of money. I want to live in big house. I'm not saying all those are wrong. But our ultimate goal in life is we want to serve Him so that the gospel will be preached to the whole world. When the gospel is preached, His name is magnified. His name is glorified. His name is lifted high. That is our goal. We want to serve Him for the rest of our life. When we know our goal, we'll be able to set our priority right. And we set our priority right, we will know that only God can satisfy us. Amen? Church, before we go, just very quick summary. I know, like a few seconds ago, I just did the summary, but let us do one more time summary. Today, our topic is about clarifying the purpose. We learn about GPS. 
God's positioning system. GPS stands for goal. Firstly, we have to know what is our goal in life. Is our goal related to the kingdom of God or related to earthly thing? We know that earthly thing will perish away one day, but the kingdom of God will never. So we should seek His kingdom and His righteousness and we set our goal and invest our resources, our money, our time, our talent in the kingdom of God where rust and moss does not destroy, where thief does not come and steal. Amen? After we know our goal, we will know how to set our priority, right? By knowing who God is. By knowing God, we will be able to know His heartbeat. But we cannot know God. You know why? Because only the Spirit of God is able to know Him. That's why it's very important for us to be born again first by believing in the gospel of God's righteousness. Through his baptism, death, and resurrection, we can be born again. And because we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we will be able to know him. When we know him, we will be able to set our priority right. Amen? And lastly, we will find out that nothing in this world can satisfy us but the righteousness of God. Only God can satisfy the heart of man because he has planted eternity in the heart of man. Amen? 